morning. Welcome to Thanksgiving Sunday for all of you. And uh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous morning it has been so far. Uh, so go out and enjoy the day if you can. And uh, go grab yourself a turkey oh, or a chicken or something. <laughs> yeah. So welcome, welcome to uh, this wonderful Sunday morning. Um, so I'm going to give the quote for the day. If you can uh, show the quote, grace is available for each of us every day our spiritual daily bread, but we must remember to ask for it with a grateful heart and not worry about whether there will be enough for tomorrow. And uh, that's a quote from uh, Saraban Brafnach. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a quote for today. Um, we're going to begin with, uh, with singing an, an introit, and you'll find it in uh, number 18 in your multicolored hymn book if you need it. Okay, number 18. And it's, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. And we'll sing this through three or four times, whatever we need to do to ground ourselves and center ourselves on this uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. And just remain seated as we sing this. So announcements this morning and introduction. I'm going to begin with uh, Cody. I would, Cody, I'd like you to introduce our musical uh, guests we have this morning, and uh, we're so excited to have them with us. So uh, let's introduce who they are. <laughs> All right, well, huh? please, let's give a warm welcome to Jorge and Colleen. Um, both have been with us before, and we're just so happy to have musicians of your caliber. Just, It's just we're going to make some wonderful music together, and and worship well together today. So Colleen and Jorge, let's uh, give them a big warm welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't wait for the songs when they come. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, um, so announcements this morning also. Um, a couple of things. I'm going to invite Nancy up here in a moment. But this Friday at uh, 7 o'clock, we begin our, our uh, Weaselhead Presents concert series, and uh, they're a wonderful duo, uh, Craig Bignall and Susan Levesque, and they live near Lloydminster now, and uh, they're, they're traveling all across uh, the, the province doing, doing performances, and then a couple more here, and then they're off to China to uh, do, do a tour, and then they're back again. So uh, they're wonderful. They call their music Cowbilly. I'm not, not, not a cowboy, it's called Billy. Huh? I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure you'll enjoy. How many have seen Over the Moon? Quite a few have. So you understand who they are and come at 7 o'clock. Tickets are here. You can buy them today or all week long or buy them at the door. So uh, that's what's happening this Friday. And Wednesday, 
at noon on the 11th is Cody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Cody's going to be... Cody's going to be doing things and playing music and dancing and, uh, all, no, not dancing. No so dancing. Come, come and bring your lunch, bring your lunch and coffee will be here. And just come back and uh, there's a, a donation table there for you to donate something and uh, uh, not food, money. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, come in and just enjoy uh, 45 minutes, maybe, I don't know what it is. So wh whatever happens, eh, Cody? Yeah, uh, a noon hour, yep. Okay, perfect. So Nancy, I'm going to invite you to come forward if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everyone in the church family should realize what happens after Thanksgiving. Pledge Fest. And um, this year we tried to slim down all the information package that you will receive, receive and we were able to have it a week early, so that's how fast it went. Therefore, they're on the Nathex table, but um, more information will be coming each week for the next three to four weeks. But Thanksgiving is more than just turkey dinners. It's more than giving thanks this day or even this month. Thanksgiving is a forever word. It is a time to give thanks, a time to reflect on what we have and what we can offer to others. It is a giving word, an action word. And I hope that we can be forever thankful and ever caring and supporting of all God's creation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks, Nancy. Just one more quick announcement. There, will, there are some changes involved if you are following in the bulletin you might want to pay more attention to the screen because the, some of the songs have changed and uh, we couldn't catch it fast enough before the uh, bulletin came in a print. So just, just follow along. You won't get lost, trust me. There you go. <laughs> Land acknowledgement, but in a spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live and work and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy. And let us all be mindful that uh, these are our brothers and sisters and we share this land together and we share it in respect. Let us be mindful of that this, uh, this morning. The lighting of the candle of Christ, and this time I'll do it. Last Sunday I forgot. So as most of us know, we live in a world where turmoil surrounds us in so many ways. And it is truly very difficult to find peace in the world or sometimes in our hearts. In this anxious time, may we turn to the light of Christ to ground each of us, to guide us, and to comfort us. So may this light from the candle be our peace. Now, to light the candle, I would invite you folks to stand when you're able, and we're going to be singing number 518 in the Red Hymn Book. It's As Those of Old Their First Fruits Brought. 518. <laughs>
I invite you to be seated. And now time for opening call to worship. And once again, the words on the screen or bulletin, we share them together. In the coldness of empty space, the sun shines. And on an ordinary planet, life springs in rich abundance. In a sacred place, people gather to sing and pray with joy, with love, and thanks. And the air we breathe is a gift from God. So we offer our deepest thanks upon this Sunday morning. The food we eat is a gift from God. And we offer our thanks for the abundance that oftentimes fills our table. The life we live is a gift from God. We offer our deepest gratitude for our living. The love we give is a gift from God. And we offer this love day in and day out. These are some of the gifts of God for all God's people, all of you. Today we come at Christ's call to remember, to worship, to live, and to give thanks. Let us worship with our thankful spirits, and let us share in these words of the prayer to the Holy One. At this sacred season, we come with thanksgiving into this holy place, remembering that before the mountains were formed, you knew us and patterned the swirls on our fingertips and colored our eyes. God of infinite variety and magnitude, we praise you for life's seasons of bittersweet and beauty, sunshine and rain, livestock and fowl, orchards and vineyards, feast days and holidays for our life, for our breath. Creator God, to you we sing songs of thanksgiving, songs of thanks living. You have blessed us in these days with an abundance beyond our wildest dreams. We celebrate on this day, the year which has gone by. We remember rain, sun, heat, and cold. We have watched the crops grow, and now we give thanks for all that you have provided. Be with us today, receive our thanksgiving, and hold up for us the visions of your kingdom that we might be forever grateful. So God of infinite love, we concern ourselves with distractions. We fill our hearts and minds with things, our things, new things, their things. We are possessed by things. We need to empty ourselves. Only then can we be filled with your spirit. We need to embrace Christ's path so that we can come to know you and your forgiveness is our new beginning as we strive to learn and to grow and to become what you have planned for your, our part in your creation. For the God of infinite love has forgiven us so through God's grace we begin again as it has ever been and as it will ever be. Amen. So the choir selection is going to be One Morning Gilds the Skies, and uh, this is where we're going to have all our different uh, musical folks share with us their, their music.
Well, thank you. That's uh, wonderful to have that on a Thanksgiving Sunday. So our, our first passage is uh, Deuteronomy, and uh, this passage this morning, in fact, the whole eighth chapter of Deuteronomy is a call to the Israelites as a remembrance of God's providence. And the, the quails and the manna and the water from the rock, and the escape from the Egyptians, and so on. It's a reminder to all of them with the gifts given, and there are obligations. And this reminder of Moses becomes more and more urgent with the advance of civilization. The very generosity of God in the growing wealth of civilization may have its end defeated by blindness of heart. So the whole generosity of the gifts on this passage calls for exceptional care against pride and care against self-sufficiency and forgetfulness of the providence of God. So I'm going to ask Elizabeth uh, to come and share this passage with us this morning. I think you should be okay there. Yep. <clears throat> First reading is from Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then you do not exalt yourself forgetting the Lord your God 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland and poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to you do good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of mine own hand have gained me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so Second Corinthians and the... It comes from Paul's letter to the folks in Corinth, and uh, this passage, I think it definitely speaks to us today for all of us are givers in one way or another. And uh, giving comes from some prerequisites. And the major one is that giving needs to come from a cheerful heart. Giving can't come from a place where you may be coerced into it. For giving something away is a sort of a blessing. A blessing from abundance. I'm not focusing here on material things, but possibly internal and external gifts which are priceless. The gift of a smile, the gift of a song, or the gift of compassion, or the gift of kindness. And you can name your own. Um, and in giving and sharing of these gifts that we have, these personal gifts to others, you will be enriched so deeply. So today, give from your hearts and be prepared to receive in abundance. Elizabeth, Corinthians passage. Mm -hmm. The epistle passage is 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God's love is a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of his ministry, not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing of grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. So in between the epistle passage and the gospel passage, we generally do a little hymn of illumination. And uh, this, is a, this is a new one. I don't think we've ever used this before. Um, it's called Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And you'd have to watch the words up on the screen because it does shift a bit. So um, number 166 in your multicolored hymn book, other words. Um, and just remain seated as we sing this together. We're going to start with humming. No. Start with humming.
hymn of illumination. So now we turn to the life of Jesus and how he describes thanksgiving and abundance and portrays another one of his teaching moments. This gospel deals with ten lepers who become healed, and only one, only one, returns and gives thanks. And the focus is not on the healing, but who this one person is. He's a Samaritan, one from the outside, one to be shunned. In, a, in our giving and in our healing, we are to not to focus primarily on middle or upper class Caucasian folks, but on humanity as a whole. For the Samaritan is the other, and it is through our sharing of our abundance with all where the world become a little more connected and the walls of divisiveness become blurred and uh, lines of demarcation are brought down. This is thanksgiving. This is thanks living. I want to share this gospel passage with you this morning. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, and keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. It's part of the good news. So the spirit of true thanksgiving well, each of us are blessed in our own ways with gifts. And some of these may be those tangible gifts, the things which you can touch or see, gifts such as how to fix an engine or uh, fix that dripping tap in the sink or how to replace a toilet in less than an hour. Those are good gifts. Some have gifts of making the perfect strawberry jam or crab apple jelly or amazing tasty buns. How am I doing with this? It's all good. <laughs> or breads are possibly the gifts of playing the most exquisite music on a violin or a cello or as Cody and Colleen, the piano or the organ or as uh, Yorgi, the tenor voice. And then the, there are the intangible gifts, the intangible gifts, the ones which you can't really see or touch. And gifts such as making others smile. Gifts of compassion. Gifts of hospitality. Gifts of presence. And of course, I don't mean the presents such as you receive on your birthday, but presents. Just being. And there, these are some of the gifts of which we have and of which some of us share openly and others hold secretly to themselves or to their family or their friends, but they're gifts. And gifts in abundance, for they are found in everyone and all over the world, in every culture, in every season, in every time and every place. So if we have so many of these gifts then how do we truly share in the abundance of which we have? How do we open ourselves with the wonderful things 
which we possess and share it with the world. Well, today is Thanksgiving Sunday, as we all know, and a day or a weekend to gather people around us and to share in food and friendship and hopefully family. The kitchen is a beehive of activity with turkey being carved or hams being sliced, potatoes and veggies being cooked and steamed and mashed and, you know, all in all, all in all, a sense of something special, something which colors our culture here and makes us who we are as Canadians or North Americans, makes us who we are as thankful people. Our true gratitude comes from being able to gather through the joys and the sorrows of life in times of abundance and also in times of struggle. And this morning in worship and praise as we offer thanks to the one who holds us all in a divine embrace that will not let us go, the spirit of true thanksgiving. So what may it be? What may it be? Well, one purpose which stuck in my brain as I was thinking on this was that thanksgiving is to help us to take our gratitude for the life that we have, the life that we've been given, for the opportunities that are ours, and carry it into the world where we live and work and struggle. If our times of thankfulness do not challenge us to look at our world and ask what others have to give thanks for, we're missing something. If Thanksgiving is only a personal public display, I believe it's a sham. The gratitude that we feel needs to be carried into our lives. I believe that we need to be constantly thankful people. We must look around, look around and see those who seem to have little for which to be thankful and ask, why? Why? Then we need to start working towards the changes that will make the world a place of thanksgiving for everybody. And I don't only mean this in the sense of the possible tangible things which we may possess, but also, and more importantly, our health, our psychological balance, our spiritual centeredness, the true makeup of who and what we are. Well, the story is told about a traditional small town church Thanksgiving service. The chancel steps were loaded with corn and potatoes, apples and jars of preserves. In the middle of it all was this big pumpkin it took three people to carry it to the chancel. It was four and a half feet in diameter. Think about that. That's a good sized pumpkin. <laughs> the minister had grown it himself. And guess what he fed it? Compost. You're thinking, what's that all about? It makes pumpkin grow really big. His thoughts on this were that growing food from the decaying refuse of our lives painted an amazing metaphor from junk to beauty. And after the service, after the service, the minister gave the pumpkin to children from a family that had just broken apart. The delight in the child's eyes, the happiness in the mom's eyes. Who could imagine a richer reward? And the psychological and spiritual balance of this family came much closer. If just for a moment, to where they needed to be. All because of a pumpkin. All because of some loving thought and some active giving. So what did it produce? It produced active living an opportunity to offer and to give great thanks. I can sometimes wonder about this giving thanks when I watch the news. I'm sure you folks do too. And it's usually bad news. 
A newscaster was quoted one day as saying, if, if it isn't news unless it's bad news, um, I don't buy that, but there are certainly exceptions. But generally, he was quite correct at times. You'd never read, read the headlines on the front page saying, 10,000 planes arrived safely without incident at their destination, and everyone left with their own luggage. Yeah, you laugh, but it happens, right? Where my, where's my guitar? Where's my bag? And uh, instead, it's about the one accident that happens. We tend to treat our personal life stories in such the same way. And uh, we may have a hundred little things uh, going on in our lives that we completely, completely take for granted, even though they are blessings. So what do we focus on? The one or two things which irritate us we do that. So what is true thanksgiving? It's more than giving thanks. It is a living thanks in a variety of ways in our world of home or office or school or where we work. It comes from the heart. And we can, with care and hard work, grow fruit that will bring joy to broken hearts from the compost of our own lives. Strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and all these things will be given to you. It's a promise. Amen. So we offer ourselves and our gifts to the spirit of life and the knowing that everything we have is a gift from this spirit. So we give in response to God's generosity as a sign of our commitment to serve Christ with our whole lives. So your offering will now be brought forward. Thank you, George. Now bow our heads just for a moment. Oh, gracious God, we bring our gifts this morning and many other ways and days, amazed and gratified that they are considered worthy of your use. So bless these gifts, O oh God, and bless us in the giving. Amen. George, thank you. Yogi, I would invite Yogi to come forward and thanks be to God. <laughs>
Oh, Jorge, thank you so much. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to you. <laughs> so Sunday's Thanksgiving reflection, this is the words that we will share together. The leaves have turned and are in the process of shedding themselves from the branches which held them tight throughout the summer. Garden flowers have blossomed for the last time this year. We remember with joy and thanks for all that God provides. We have come to give God our thanks and our praise. Markets are filled with the products of the season. Meals are prepared with love and with care. We remember with joy and with thanks for all that God provides. We have come to give God our thanks and our praise. People gather to be with friends and to be with family. Stories are shared and insights revealed. We remember with joy and with thanks for all that God provides. We have come to give God our thanks and our praise. Our lives are filled with many activities. Many people seek our presence and our help. We remember with joy and with thanks for all that God provides. We have come to give God our thanks and our praise. And we have come to be made into your bread, O God, bread reformed to feed the world with your good news. And we give thanks, O God, for the oneness with you and offer to you the words which Jesus taught us to offer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, the words of commissioning we can share together for each other in the midst of God's ordinary miracles, we came today to celebrate wonder. Through the Christ, God calls us out to new places, to new hopes, to new lives. Through the Spirit, God sends us out with spirits open to the divine presence, with lives filled, ready to share God's love. May God bless our moments of rest and our times at work. May God bless our journey today and always in Christ's name. Go forth ready to notice God's ordinary miracles. Amen. So a closing hymn, you can stand if you're able, and for the fruit of all creation, number 227 in your red hymn book.
Wow, yeah. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be so gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you the deepest of peace. Go now into the world with a song in your heart. Amen.